In this video, we are going to work on problem 3.3.8 from the textbook. Um, let g and h be continuous functions defined on the interval 0, 1. And uh, we define a new function as follows. f of x is equal to g of x if x is a rational number in the interval 0, 1. And um, f of x is equal to h of x if x is an irrational number in this interval. And then we have to prove that if t of a is equal to h of a for some a in the interval 0, 1, then um, the function f is continuous at a. Okay. And now um, in part b, we define um, the function f as follows. f of x is equal to x if x is a rational number in the interval 0, 1. And um, f of x is 1 minus x if x is an irrational number in this interval. And then we have to find all a um, in the interval 0, 1 at which the function f is continuous. Okay? So I'm going to illustrate um, the function f as follows. So here is the graph of the function g, and here is the graph of the function h. Um, and as you can see, um, h of a is equal to g of a, okay? So now um, we define the function f as before, and we have to show that um, the new function f is continuous at this point a. Before solving the problem, let me recall the definition of function continuity. Let f be a function defined on a domain d. Here d is a subset of the set of all real numbers, and let a be a number in d. Then uh, we say that f is continuous at a if for any epsilon greater than 0, there exists delta greater than 0, such that the absolute value of f of x minus f of a is less than epsilon whenever the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta and x is in, in d. All right? So this is the graph of the function f, as you can see. And this is a, and this is f of a. All right? So this function is continuous at a if no matter what epsilon greater than 0 we pick, we can always find delta greater than 0 such that whenever x is in this interval, x is in the interval a minus delta, a plus delta, f of x is in the interval f of a minus epsilon, f of a plus epsilon. Okay? So based on this definition, we will be able to um, solve the problem. Now let me focus on the first part of the problem. We are going to show that the function f given by this formula is continuous at a. And um, in order to do so, we are going to estimate the absolute value of f of x minus f of a and show that whenever x is near a, the absolute value of um, f of x minus f of a is near 0. Okay. So observe that. f of a is equal to g of a and is equal to um, h of a. Okay. And then we have the following estimate. The absolute value of f of x minus f of a is equal to um, the absolute value of um, g of x minus g of a if x is a um, rational number in the interval 0, 1. Okay? Because f of x is equal to g of x if x is a rational number in the interval 0, 1. Okay? And also, um, the absolute value of f of x minus f of a is equal to the absolute value of h of x minus h of a if x is a, um, an irrational number in the interval 0, 1. Okay? So we have the following estimate. Um, no matter what x is in the interval 0, 1, the absolute value of f of x minus f of a is always less than or, or equal to the, the sum of um, the absolute value of g of x minus g of a and 
the absolute value of um, h of x minus h of a. And this is true for all x in the interval 0, 1. Okay? Indeed, if x is um, a rational number, then the absolute value of f of x minus f of a is equal to the absolute value of t of x minus t of a, and for sure it is less than or equal to the sum of the absolute value of t of x minus t of a and the absolute value of h of x minus h of a. In the case where uh, x is an irrational number, then um, this absolute value is equal to the absolute value of h of x minus h of a, and similarly, it is less than the sum of this number and this number. Okay, so now um, we are going to take any epsilon greater than zero. Okay, because uh, t and h are continuous. at a by the definition um, we can find delta greater than zero such that the absolute value of um, t of x minus g of a is less than um, epsilon over 2 and the absolute value of h of x minus h of a is also less than epsilon over 2 whenever the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta and x is in the interval um, 0, 1. Okay, so uh, we obtain this by um, applying the definition of continuity for the function g and uh, for, the, for the function h and then combine them. Okay. Um, so from here, we're going to see that, uh, therefore, the absolute value of um, f of x minus uh, f of a will be less than um, epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, which is epsilon, whenever um, the absolute value of um, x minus a is less than delta and x is in the um, interval 0, 1. Okay, so let me summarize what we have done. We take any epsilon greater than 0. We have found um, delta greater than 0 such that the um, absolute value of f of x minus f of a is less than epsilon whenever the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta and x here is in the um, interval 0, 1. Therefore, by the definition, the function f um, is continuous at A. Uh, now we have a further remark after solving the first part of the problem. If A is a, um, a real number in the interval 0, 1 and um, G of A is not equal to H of A, then the function F defined earlier is not continuous at A. Uh, to prove this, we can use, uh, for example, the uh, sequential criterion for continuity. Now, indeed, let's just first consider the case where, um, where where a is a rational number. Okay, so um, consider the case where a is an uh, a rational number in the interval 0, 1, okay? In this case, um, f of a is equal to uh, g of a, okay? Because uh, we use the definition of the function f. a is in q, so um, f of a is equal to um, g of a, okay? And now, by the density of the set of all um, irrational numbers, in the interval 0, 1, we can find a sequence of irrational number not converted to, to A. Okay, so um, let 
as an be a sequence of um, irrational number in the interval 0, 1 not converted to a okay then um, let's go ahead and find the limit of f of Sn as n approaches infinity, all right? Um, because each as n is irrational, by the formula of the function f here, um, f of as n is equal to h of as n. So this is the limit of h of as n as n approaches infinity, all right? And as you know, h is a continuous function on the interval zero one as n converges to A by the sequential criterion for continuity, this limit as um, n approaches infinity is equal to h of A, okay? Now, uh, by the hypothesis here, h of A is not equal to um, g of A, and g of A here is equal to f of A, okay? So, we have found a sequence of um, real numbers as n such that as n converges to a but f of s n does not convert to f of a so again by the sequential criterion for continuity um, f is not continuous as a in this case Okay, and similarly, if um, a here is an irrational number in the interval 0, 1, you can also show that f is not continuous at a by following a um, similar procedure. Now we are going to work on the second part of the problem. In this situation, the function f is given as follows. f of x is equal to x if x is a rational number in the interval 0, 1, and f of x is equal to 1 minus x um, if x is an irrational number in the interval um, 0, 1, okay? So we, um, we see that in this situation, we only need to apply the first part of the problem for the case where g of x is equal to x and h of x is equal to 1 minus x for x in the interval 0, 1, okay? So um, to find all a at which the function is uh, continuous, we are going to find on a such that um, g of a is equal to h of a by solving the, this equation. And we can easily see that um, when if a is equal to 1 half, then um, g of a is equal to h of a, okay? And so f is continuous at a, okay? Now, if a is not equal to 1 half, then as you can see, um, g of a is not equal to h of a, okay? So by the remark after the solution, we see that um, the function f is not continuous at a. Okay, so um, the function is continuous at only one number uh, on the interval uh, in the interval zero one that is uh, one half.